Welcome back, Sarah. In this podcast, we have the Skid Row Trip, the Blood Drive, and Woody's All-American Assembly. Now we have our Skid Row Trip with an interview by Aaron Colston. Hello, this is Aaron Colston. I'm a freelance journalist with the Sarah Podcasting. I'm here with Christian Tiata and Alexis Johnson to talk about what they're expecting to see at Skid Row. So, Alexis, what are you expecting at Skid Row? Um, I don't know what to expect. This is a new experience for me, but I know that um, this will make me appreciate life a little bit more and um, what I have. So, yeah. What about you, Christian? I'm expecting to help others and uh, as a result of helping others get a learning experience from the whole situation of going to a lesser, um, lesser, uh, <laughs> you know, to tear down your ego a little. A lesser thing that I'm used to seeing. Yeah. It's great to talk with you guys and um, we'll see more of Alexis Johnson and Christian Tiata after their adventure on Skid Row. Hello, I'm Zaren Colson again, freelance journalist with Sarah High School, and I'm talking here with Bantu, who's living on Skid Row. So, well, Mr. Bantu, I don't live on Skid Row. I'm oh, sorry, I'm, I'm very, Row. I'm very sorry. You live on? I I live in Hollywood, but I come to Skid Row, you know, and use some of the facilities around here, like the bathroom or, you know, something like that. But I don't live in a shelter, or nothing like that. See, so not everyone, not everyone's just living on the streets. Oh no, there's a lot of people here that live in these hotels. They have uh, SRO, uh, they have uh, sit-in shelters. You know, everybody don't have a tent and stuff like that because that has been cut back over the last ten years. You know, the hippie kitchen actually uh, fought for the rights of the homeless to try to keep it, but you know how the police is. They want to keep it clean because other people probably mess up for other people. So we just want to, you know, you know, thank them for that part. You know, for leaving some of the tents out here. Because legally, I, I saw a notice that says you can't. The, there's so no at, people that allow. After nine o'clock, you allowed to pitch a tent until six in the morning. I see. Yeah. You want to see. Right. So you know. Yeah. So, but how are you living? How are you living? Oh, I'm living pretty good. You know, just living on a fixed income. You know, trying to save money, get an apartment one day or something like that. You know. So. So it's, it's a rough times, rough times, huh? No, not really rough times. I've had great times during the time of Obama. I've saved quite a bit of money, so it's not really that bad. You know, anytime you can save up to $9,000 and within six months, you're doing damn good. Thank you for your insight, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Here with Gio from the, G from the Dream Center. And what type of ministry is it? It's a Christian type of outreach. We do adopt the blocks on Saturdays. To We come out here, pass out food, flyers, invite them to church, love on them and just show God's love. What is it um, that brings you here, you know? What is it that makes you want to outreach to these, you know, to the less fortunate and everything, you know? Like, what is it in Christ's, you know, ministry that, you know, brings you out here? Well, before I, I, I did the, the discipleship program at the Dream Center, I was homeless, and I was dealing with drug issues. And so I came to the Dream Center, found help, and found God. And so, of a way of giving back and just showing Christ's love, we come. I come out here and just be a light and show them that God loves them and that there's somebody that cares and that they can get over their addictions. And yeah, that's what we do. Um, so what are um, some of the stories that you know, you've experienced out here with the people? Not a whole lot of stories because a lot of these people just, they're kind of used to getting food and drinks every Saturday. So That's a good thing. It's a good thing, it is, but they're kind of just used to that. So there's really not no stories. They kind of just shake your hand, take the flyer and the food, and then just kind of go in their ways. But you can honestly see that some of them want help. It's just that they can't get out of their addictions. They're kind of just stuck in the rut, you know. So, But we just come love, and, and, and they smile back. A lot of them smile back, and, and that's all we can do is just show up every Saturday and just be a light. And sooner or later, somebody's just, something's just going to click, and they're going to want to change, you know. And... That's all we can do. You know, the Lord said, you know, you can't, you don't light a lamp and then put it under the bed. You take, you, you light a lamp and you show it out to the world. And that's great that the Dream Center is doing this. So, um, thanks a lot. No problem, man. Thank you.
It's Aaron Colson, one last time, here with Christian Tiati and Alexis Johnson. Um, they're after uh, interview, after their um, you know, experience on Skid Row. So, Christian, you know, what would you uh, like to see out there more? Uh, like, what did you feel was lacking, you know? Uh, I felt was lacking that um, the, people, the people were nice and stuff, but I felt they could have been uh, more respectful to us. But it was good. We're doing a good thing to help them. And they should like appreciate what we did, but most of them did. Uh, we're lacking. We needed more food. We could have more food, things like that. What did you know this trip do, you know, for you? What did it change inside of you? You know, um, it really, I don't know. It opened me up more to life, and I feel like I'm, I'm really grateful for what I have and um, for the Skid Row people. I think they could have been more grateful. Like I gave one lady a bag, and she's like. This don't have no sandwich in it. I was like, no, it's just a snack bag. And she threw it back at me like, oh, all right then. Like, <laughs> okay, but it was cool. So thanks a lot, guys. Um, means, you know, th thanks for, uh, you know, taking your time out on your Saturday. Um, I bet you didn't regret it at all, huh? <laughs> all right, you guys. So thank you. That was Christian Tiati and Alexis Johnson. The skill road trip was very inspiring and interesting. How would you like it? I really loved it. I like the fact that everybody can give back. Did you love it? I loved it. Next we have our blood drive. <laughs> Hello, what is your name? My name is Yemisi Aribo. And how are you feeling today? I'm feeling cool, chill. Why did you decide to give blood? Because it's my senior year and I never gave blood before, so I decided to do it this year. Are you anxious? Yes, I'm terrified because I'm really little and I'm afraid I'm going to pass out. So, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed. All right, so you're going to need moral support. Are you looking forward to that pint of ice cream afterwards? Sure. Even though it's Tabasco Robbins and I like Cold Stones. What flavor would you get? <laughs> I don't know. I heard Baskin Robbins was nasty. <laughs> there you have it. Hello, my name is Patrick Collins and this is... Mr. Dunlap. And how are you feeling today? Doing great. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, so, why did you decide to give blood today? Uh, to be honest, it's the first time I've ever given blood, and uh, I just thought it'd be the right thing to do. All right. So, how how uh, how long has it been since they put the needle in? Uh, just started, to be honest, and uh, I'm already feeling woozy. You think you're gonna make it? No, nah, I'll be fine. It uh, don't feel a thing. All right, that's good. There you have it. Hi. Hello, my name is Patrick Collins, and this is... Darlene Savord. And what is your profession exactly? I am the manager over the Providence Mobile Blood Donor Department. We have five hospitals that we collect blood for in the Southern California area. And uh, I have three recruiters that work in the South Bay area setting up blood drives. We just want to say thank you very much for... Um, allowing us to come in and run blood drives with you and just to let you know that the blood that you donate goes directly back to Little Company of Mary Torrance or San Pedro so it stays in the community. And how is your, how is your experience today? It's been very well. Uh, the students are absolutely wonderful. They're very polite. They're very well behaved. We haven't had many reactions at all. We rarely have reactions. It's so safe to donate blood. I've done it 42 times, and one donation can save up to three lives. Okay, thank you. Um, the blood drive was wonderful. Congratulations to Patrick for doing a great interview. Next, we have our All-American Assembly for Robert Woods. Now, it is my privilege and honor to announce that Robert Woods has been selected as a 2010 United States Army All-American. Robert embodies the many characteristics of an Army strong soldier, and we are proud to have him on our team. Robert, on behalf of the Secretary and Chief of Staff of the United States Army, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the U.S. Army All-American Class of 2000. First, I would like to thank God for blessing me with the talents that I have and the opportunity to play the game of football. My family, who has continually supported and pushed me. My dear sister, Olivia, who has set the example of how to never give up no matter what obstacles or challenges I face with. 
my coaches, Austin Bird, Turner, and Coach Chuck, and Coach David Washington, who have been a big part of my high school achievements. My teammates, who have been encouraged and motivated me throughout my four years at Sarah. I would also like to thank the student body and faculty of Sarah High, who cheered me on. I would like to thank the U.S. Army All-American Bowl for selecting me to participate in the 2010 U.S. Army All-American Bowl as they celebrate their 10th anniversary. This is an honor and a privilege to be a part of this prestige bowl game. I would like to thank the U.S. Army for fighting and protecting us overseas. Thank you all and God bless you. I'm here with Devin Spam. We just won the CIF championships. How does it feel being that we, it was such a close game? How does it feel to win? Yeah, it feels good. You know, I'm excited. Like, I really don't know what to say. I'm just happy about it. And I feel that um, I really couldn't let my team down. That's why I had to come back and play in the second half. Yes, that's a good answer. We won. That's a good, I don't know what else to say today. So what do you have planned for the rest of the weekend? I know it's going to be parties and functions. Yeah, it's going to be parties and functions, but tomorrow I'll have a trip to ASU, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to study for my finals and get ready for that next week. Okay, very studious. Thank you. I'm here with both of our senior Bryans. How does it feel being that it's your last year? This is one of the most beautiful feelings I've ever experienced in my life. How do you feel, Dama? Great. And you too? Man, I love all my bros, man. We did it. So we just won the, the championship, and I'm here with Coach Aldenberg. So, Coach Aldenberg, what did it take to earn this championship? Well, you know, a lot of guys worked real hard, you know, since January of last year, and they just kept going, and we knew it was possible, but uh, it took a, just an unbelievable game, and uh, just a lot of great plays by our guys, and we're real happy. But, and what does this mean to you? It means everything. I mean, it's just it's what we've fought for and, and worked for in all these guys. I'm just I'm just so excited that we got this opportunity. I mean, it's just it's it's a, I've been here for a while. It's my 15th year here, 11th year as the head coach, and and we've you know we've come from we were uh, two seven and one my first year and uh, 50 guys in the program. So we've uh, we've come a long way, and uh, we're real just just real fired up to be here. All right, thank you. Congratulations, Woody. Bye, Sarah. Ready to go. 